Gala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. At six minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Boy, this next book is very powerful. James Dennison is the author. The book is called Survivor, Love Thy Enemy. Uh, James Dennison is, in, is a Vietnam veteran. He, uh, it says here he struggles with PTSD. It also says he lost his son in 2010. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, the book, uh, Survivor, Love Thy Enemy, um, says here, Jim Dennison was wounded in combat, and while recovering in a hospital, he was befriended by a nurse. The nurse turned out to be a spy, and they had a romantic uh, entanglement that led to tortures, terror, and murder. Jim Dennison, this is already interesting. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Where are you calling from? Uh, uh, just Kauai, Hawaii. Hawaii? Oh my gosh. Yes, oh my gosh. What what time is it in Hawaii? A little after six. Six. That would be yeah. this, this morning or last night? <laughs> oh, no, this morning. Oh my gosh. It's only six o'clock in the morning. Well, thank you for getting up early to be with us. No problem. No problem. Um, so, uh, tell, tell me about the, the story. How long has this been in you and, and you decided to suddenly write the story, huh? Yeah, well, it's always been there, but when my son passed, I uh, I went to a clairvoyant in Oceanside, California, Uchi McKessick, and she connected me with him. He ordered me to enjoy my life and go west. As soon as I saw Holloway Bay, I felt spiritually renewed and uh, wrote the book. Really? He told you to go west? Yes, sir. And where were you when, yes. you, when he told you that? Uh, San Diego. Well, there's nowhere to go except for <laughs> Hawaii. <laughs> I go back to me because we're back to Vietnam. <laughs> oh my gosh! So is is the um, tell me about the relationship with the the spy nurse? Yeah, well, that's uh, she was the uh, actually the uh, was uh, in love with the head of the Viet Cong Van and. Um, she eventually became um, uh, horrified by the atrocities that he committed. Oh, and, uh, okay. So then she and uh, Tom got uh, went further along, and Tom uh, converted to Buddhism, and they eventually married. Oh, okay. So it wasn't you. you, you the the real, real, romantic. No, no. That's a is a fiction, fictional character based on people that I knew of and. Uh, and uh, did did get involved with Vietnamese nurses and things of that nature. Does talking about the PTSD make uh -huh. it a little easier to deal to live with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, dude, you never re you never recover. You adjust. You know, we all have our we all have our Vietnams. You know. Well, maybe so, so not as much as a real. Oh yeah. I think a, a no, in different, in different, different degrees. But uh, you know, we all have you know problems that we ne never get over, and parents die, and, and things like that. And, Do you know we had a know, just, we have a veterans show on Thursdays? And in fact, it was this morning. Well, mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one time the room was filled with Vietnam veterans, and the the guy who uh -huh. run the guy who is the host of the show uh -huh. said, "I want I want each of you to tell me your memories of Vietnam." And not one of them talked about battle. One of them said, "Oh, I remember the beautiful mornings. Mm -hmm. I, I remember. Yeah. What, I remember the children." And and and, yeah. and then after they were all done, he said, "I asked the question to right. make, to make a point. None of these guys yes. are going to tell you about the war itself." No, exactly. Mm -hmm. They will among themselves. They will be will among ourselves, mm -hmm. but not uh, in public, shall we say? Have you been back to Vietnam? No, I have many friends that have gone back, and a lot of them go back because they can't remember stuff, and I tell them, if you don't remember, you don't want to remember. Mm -hmm. And I've never been in a bad car accident, but if I ever was, I sure wouldn't go back and revisit the site. 
<laughs> they say it's beautiful. Beautiful place, wonderful people, yes. This had to be so emotional for you to write this book because you had to really have, you had to enjoy thinking about the good, but then you yes, had to put yeah. the, the bad in the forefront as well. Yeah, but it's 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 worse not to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Did it change? You know, any, you deal with it. Did the the war and do you document this in the book? Did it change anything about your religious convictions? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, I, I got more well between that and uh, my son's passing. I got more involved with Buddhism. You know, oh. the Dalai Lama says, "What happens when your soul passes?" When your body passes to your soul, he giggles and says, "Oh, goody, another adventure!" <laughs> oh my gosh! But but yeah, as a Catholic, yeah, you you were pardon. you were brought up as a Catholic, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's that's all the guilt from this, that, and the other thing, you know, and it's just not not helpful in a situation like that. Hmm. So when you it's were a, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So when you were um, recalling all of your thoughts and and all of your feelings, did you feel did were did you keep them inside while you were writing, or were you able to share them with a few people in your life well, that weren't involved with the I, work? I, I've been an alcoholic all my life, you know, uh, genetically. Uh, lost of sisters, and mothers, almost myself. And actually, my alcoholism helped me deal with the PTSD because when I when I drank, I talked about my combat experiences, hmm. and that helped. Yeah. Uh, the The book is called Survivor. Just, Survivor, love thy enemy. Do you love your enemy? Uh -huh. And is that, is that a lesson that you continually, like when you, you know, let's say you 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 run up against some knucklehead in the grocery store? Do you <laughs> do you love him? Well, the, you know, the opposite. The opposite happens out here. You know, I get many more. I get total support from people, especially younger people, thanking me for my service or whatever. Yeah. And. Um, I ran into a group of Vietnamese in one of the beaches one day, <laughs> and I had my 9th Infantry Division hat on about my age. And I had Vietnamese come up to me, had me crying, and said, We want to thank you for trying to save our country. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh, that is wonderful. Well, uh, yeah, at least, yeah. I, at least I recognized what the mission was supposed to be, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, they love us. They hated the Russians. And, um, you say that um, you have only your conscious, that you don't have anything else but but yourself. Not even. Well, yeah, there is. There, the combat's the only time you're free. There is no God. There are no parents. There's no police. There's no teachers. It's just your soul. You're, you're in. That's where PT. You know, atrocities come from, and you have to deal with that later. When you were diagnosed with PTSD, did you? Were, were you in uh, denial, or did you say, okay, let me give this say, a shot? I wouldn't say I was in denial. Um, you know, PTSD wasn't really recognized until about 1980. And, you know, the guys from the World War II Korea weren't treated for it, but once it was recognized for Vietnam veterans, everybody was given access to... Uh, Benefits, so I get I get a monthly stipend from the VA and full medical and dental care for the rest of my life. Oh my gosh! So do you, do you think that there's this kind of a, a, a mystical thing that happens when when you're put put into a place where the enemy looks really beautiful and <laughs> and you yeah. and you fall yeah. in love? I mean, is that is that kind of God's way of saying? You know, these people aren't as bad as you think. Here's a great example. No, you know, there, it was a civil war. It was their country. We didn't belong there. Mm -hmm. Most every president from from Eisenhower I should have been put in jail because they didn't know what was going on. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like at this point. And everybody there, the soldiers were were so young, and you had, um, and but but you guys as soldiers knew the seriousness of this that some might not make it back and then you told the story oh, about yeah. Andy sure. and that yeah that made me chuckle that story could you recount yeah. that uh, which one was that I'm sorry about Andy shaving off his mustache 
Oh yeah. Well, he um, he felt that he was gonna he was gonna go. You know, he uh, he killed in the next fish, and his wife hated his mustache, and she didn't let him do. Uh, well, he didn't want he didn't want her to see her in the casket with the mustache. So he shaved it off before you went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Right. I know some yeah. of those stories did make me chuckle, that even though that is kind yeah. of funny. So even though yeah. you you guys were young, like eighteen, nineteen years old, you yeah. sure had a lot of insight into what might happen, and that is just you know uh, amazing to me, and it's it's also scary. Well, the first time we got ambushed, my buddy Jim Stevens out of Morro Bay. <laughs> Bullets flying everywhere, and I was I was digging dirt. And he laughing like crazy. He said, "Jim, I think they're trying to kill us." <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, you got to have the levity of the situation there. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, the book is on Amazon. I, I found it on Amazon. You're getting really good reviews on Amazon. Um, uh, five stars across the board, looks like. Um, so, when did this come out? And is is this your uh, first? about three years? About three years ago. Oh, okay. Is this your first book? Yes. But you have another one in the works, correct? Well, I got one. Another one I self-published called Immigrant About an Irishman that Moves to Chicago to Get Away from Socialism Realizes the uh, unions in Chicago are just as socialized. Marries the boss's daughter, does well. Has elements of the IRA and the Catholic Church and the Mafia. And now I'm writing a subsequent novel. Um, to survivor about the um, Paris Peace Talk talks and the delays and, and Kissinger's being such a traitor delayed the peace talks several years um, which caused another $20,000 $20,000 American deaths and he was being paid off by the uh, munitions manufacturers and paid out it was all money gosh so are you like a late bloomer I mean all of a sudden you discovered writing well, it runs in the family, you know, and I was always fairly shy and private or whatever. When I lost my son, I thought, well, what's the point? I got nothing to lose. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well, do you think you'll ever be writing the story about your son? Um, I don't think so. You know, we have a very short life and just, uh, well, I'll just, you know, something I really haven't considered, but a, a good idea. Hmm. And writing this book, uh, Survivor, Love Thy Enemy, was that good therapy for you, do you think, on a personal level? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's many people that have been helped through through reading it, you know, many Vietnam vets. Have you, have you shared it with the guys you know? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and do they recognize themselves in the book? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have been different, yeah. Uh, how long did it take you to readjust to life here as a civilian? Or have you not um, really adjusted? It, it, it never happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But about, but about five years through a, a wonderful life and... Uh, Success of a salesman or whatever, yeah, you know, it's about, you become functional. The book is called Survivor, Love Thy Enemy. James Dennison is the author, and he's calling us from Hawaii. So what is your day like? Do you, do you get up early and, and start writing, or do you... Uh... <coughs> yeah, I do some writing. I do exercise for an hour in the pool and meditate. And, um, I'm 71. I fight off the women. It takes a lot out of me. And one of the most you, you, one of the most unique things about your book is that you write it from all perspectives. Sometimes the authors will just have their own. Right. Well, that's the difference between this mine and a lot of uh, war novels. And the most war novels are just about the combat and the self, and not about the um, the uh, tremendous toll taken on the uh, participants on both sides. Is there anything you would have done different if you could have? Um, you know, not really long term. The, the big, the big regret is that my uh, fiance and my parents, her parents, suffered greatly as a result of my year in combat and my subsequent actions, and never, 
you know, I, I had long-term benefits through friends and the VA and whatever. Mm -hmm. They never got anything out of it. Did you ever marry your fiance? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I treated her terribly after I got back, and then about um, you know, six years later, she was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease and, and mm. passed at 28. Oh my gosh, that's too bad. So I was sitting, I was sitting there in December of 66 with my the fiance who looked like Selma Hayek and my sister who was oh, wow. seven years older college graduate and her her boyfriend who had survived World War Two in Korea. I'm on my way to Vietnam ten years later they had all passed and I hmm. survived. Oh my gosh. But I was my after my yeah. after my mom passed away, uh, I was going through a lot of the things in her house and I found an old uh -huh. I found an old newspaper article and it was about my grandfather who had fought in World War One on the German side? Moved, no, I'll be doing, yeah. Moved to America and lived in this little community. And the article was about the fact that he met the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> he on his own yeah. on his own block was one of the American soldiers who I'll also yeah. who also fought in World War One, and they both had memories of the same battle. Oh my! I'll be damned. They were literally of shooting at each other. I guess at one point. It's sure. Just, it's just, and they were here. They well, were, they were you friends. know, at, at, at Christmas holidays in World War One, they would have a ceasefire, and the opposing soldiers would play soccer. Right. Yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, not that I was there. I don't mean I remember. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean I remember hearing about that. I think mm -hmm. uh, uh, future generations, like the soldiers that are now, if they would read this book this would give them some kind of hope that even though everything's so bad now that things yeah. could be a uh, little better well the trouble now is that the, the guys that come back from Afghanistan they get the psychological treatment in the uh, in drugs to deal with their PTSD oh but the problem is they become dependent on a psychiatrist and the drugs and they don't face the problem themselves. They have, you know, you got to deal with it yourself. So, what is the best thing that helps you? Is it the Buddhism? Yeah, I'd say so. Absolutely, and just uh, and just having a wonderful life here in so Hawaii, and you know, live in the present. Do you go and visit like the uh, uh, high schools? and chat with some no, of the students? No, no. Well, we, I, I have a lot of friends that do, but I... Uh -huh. I and what... No. How do you deal with sometimes if you wake up with a bad memory? How do you yourself deal with that so you don't slump into a you know, depression? I don't really, don't really have that. The, the, worst, the worst thing that happened to me, it seems like, is that wake up in the morning and I think I'm coming off of R&R &R and got to go back into combat. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but that doesn't last, doesn't last long. So when you did have your R&R, &R, what did you do there for R&R? &R? I can't talk, I can't talk oh. about it on the air. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I oh, got out fun. about a lot. I met the local mm -hmm. people, you know, good, bad, yeah. and different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh gosh! Hmm. No, this is a, a lot. this is a wonderful book. I really enjoyed reading this. Um, Good. Yeah, Good. I have a copy of the book. It's called Survivor: Love Thy Enemy. If you've been listening and you're intrigued and you would like the copy that was sent to me, call me right now and I'll put your name on it, and it'll be waiting for you here at the station. Uh, the rest of us have to go buy it. I did find it on Amazon, where it looks like it's available. Let me see. Uh, yeah. as a Kindle also. So you can get it as a Kindle or as yes. a paperback. Um, uh -huh. What what else would you tell us? Do you have a website or a Facebook page? Yeah, there's a website. Just uh, look, up the, look up the title of the book. SurvivorLoveThyEnemy.com Right. Oh, you had brought up Henry Kissinger earlier, and uh, it seems like he's <laughs> he's been around forever, so I'm really going to look forward to reading some of your writings on him. Something yeah, well, there's there's several books that just flat out call him a traitor and a, you know, a warmonger and whatever. Well, he's not human. 
He's, there's no way he's still working. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. There, there's no way that this guy was working with LBJ and is still working with, right. with, with Trump. Yeah. That is not a human being. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another planet or something. Um, yeah. He, yeah I, he's a real survivor. <laughs> well, you sound like somebody we'd have fun hanging out with. So what, I think so. So what do you do? Yeah. In the, what do you do in the evenings? Um, I go to the local bar a lot and socialize, and you know, watch TV just like anybody else. There you go. It's right up my alley. <laughs> there you I go. I join you over there. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to yeah. Hawaii. I want to go to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> if, if everybody in Hawaii yeah. is as laid back as you. I th- I think I'm okay. Well, that's 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 Garden Island, Kauai. This is the old Kauai up here. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh my gosh. Do, do you do you enjoy the tourists? Oh yeah, absolutely, oh. sure. Oh, you do. Okay. I, I sometimes here in Florida, you know, you sort of yeah. have, you have mixed feelings you about tourists. You know. No, no, no. They're all interesting, and they're all they all respect the uh, the, the spirituality of the place, and uh, you know. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank James for being on the air with us today. Good luck with everything. And if you finish the next book, let us know about it. We'd love to talk to you again. All right. Thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. We will take a little break and we'll be right back. Hey! 